Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Good to have you with us once again. Much of the mainstream media, even those on the liberal end of the spectrum, have declined to cover the push, the possibility that Brent Kavanaugh should face an impeachment inquiry, at the very least. What's the basis for these allegations of a possible perjury against Kavanaugh? Well, according to our guest, they're substantial. Our guest is not a pundit writing an opinion piece or a column. She's the former chief counsel of nominations on the United States Senate Judiciary Committee, where she worked under Senator Patrick Leahy. And while the hearings were going on that involved Kavanaugh in the early 2000s, and he worked on the White House staff, he allegedly stole documents or received stolen documents. Lisa Graves, who was recently the executive director of the Center for Media and Democracy, and wrote an article in Slate this week, writing that Kavanaugh lied under oath about receiving stolen documents from the Democrats on the Judiciary Committee is a major, major step. Lisa Graves is now co-director of Documented Investigations. And welcome, Lisa Graves, to the Real News Network. Good to have you with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. It's good to have you with us. And, I, and you know, it, to me, it, it, this, these are really kind of stunning allegations that were made by your, in your article in Slate. Interesting to me that many of the places, some of which I've worked for before, uh, NPR and, and other uh, major outlets have not really pushed this idea. But now it's coming to the fore because of your article on Slate. So let's, let's go, take a step backwards here uh, and talk about why you made these allegations now. Then we'll listen to some clips to kind of back up what you're saying and get under those. So why, why now? What, what, what brought this out? Well, quite frankly, I was shocked by the hearing testimony last week in response to questions from members by, by Senator Leahy and others. I was watching them uh, at home. I was watching the hearings and um, I couldn't uh, believe the documents that were being described uh, to uh, Judge Kavanaugh and his responses to them, uh, in part because I knew his responses from 2004, immediately after the Senate Sergeant at Arms had issued its a report on the theft of those files uh, from me and from other Democratic counsel on the Senate Judiciary Committee in which um, the, the Sergeant at Arms, a Republican, appointed by Republican, uh, named quite clearly that Manny Miranda had been uh, seizing and taking those files, stealing those files for more than 18 months on the most controversial nominees, that key information from those memos had been shared with the Wall Street Journal and other outlets, and that Manny Miranda declined to provide to the Senate investigators the names of his White House contacts. And so Brett Kavanaugh was asked more than 100 questions, uh, either orally or in writing, in connection with his 2004 and 2006 nominations, in, in which he uh, declined, uh, denied expressly uh, that he had received any information, any, that he'd ever uh, been given any email uh, by Mr. Miranda in, that ever shared or referenced or provided uh, any documents that appeared to have been drafted or prepared by Democratic staff. And in the hearing last week, he was questioned precisely about that. Talking points, letters, confidential uh, letters, information provided by Miranda to Judge Kavanaugh. So I want to play these clips for our, for our viewers here for a moment and then go and talk about what they mean. Uh, these are clips that came from hearings that Kavanaugh had to sit through when he was being nominated for the Court of Appeals. They took place in 2004, was the first one. Second one was 2006, when he was questioned by Senator Ted Kennedy. And the most recent one happened last week, uh, where he is being questioned by Senator Leahy of Vermont, uh, who our guest worked for on the Judiciary Committee in the early 2000s. So let's Watch these, and then we're going to come back and kind of rip them apart a bit and see what the reality is here. Did Mr. Miranda ever share, share, reference, or provide you with any documents that appeared to you to have been drafted or prepared by Democratic staff members of the Senate Judiciary Committee? No, I was not aware of that matter uh, ever until I learned of it in the media. I just want to clear up the questions that Oren asked. You had said that Mr. Miranda never provided these documents, you know, that were right. from this. Had you seen them in any way? Did you, did you ever come across memos from internal files of any Democratic members given to you or provided to you in any way? No. Thank you. Have you ever gone back uh, now that you are aware of it and seen what decisions you may or might not have taken on the basis of of documents that um, were illegally taken? Senator, there's a very important premise in your question that I, I think is incorrect, which is uh, I, I didn't know about the memos or see the memos that I think you're describing. So I think- Oh, you, you never saw any of those? You, 
No, Senator, that's correct. I don't know. I'm not aware of uh, the memos. I never saw such memos uh, that I think you're referring to. Did Mr. Miranda send you an email asking you in another, on July 19, 2002, asking you and another Bush official why the Leahy people were looking into financial ties between two special interest groups and Priscilla Owen, a particular controversial nominee to the Fifth Circuit. If he said, why are the Leahy people looking into this? From Manny Miranda. I don't really have a specific recollection of any of this, Senator, but it would have been, it would have not have been at all unusual for, and this happens all the time, I think, which is the Leahy really? people are looking into this and the Hatch people are looking well, into that. I, I think. Were you aware that you were getting from Mr. Miranda stolen emails? Not at all, Senator. Uh, it was part of what appeared to be what? standard discussion about it's common. Okay, Lisa, and I've, I've read some commentary by people, or especially in the conservative media, uh, about this. So, I mean, what do we know? I mean, how do we know that he knew that the documents as far back in 2004 were stolen? from your committee, from the work you did. I mean, and they, uh, and that he was not just made aware of this in some other way. How do we know they were stolen? How do we know he knew that they were stolen? Well, first of all, there, there are two parts there. <clears throat> One is he was clearly in uh, regular contact with Miranda throughout uh, 2003 um, during the heated nomination battles over those very nominees that the, uh, that the documents he was questioned about relate to. Um, and so even if he didn't know at the time that he was receiving stolen information, which I think is implausible given the content of some of the information that he was given, uh, a confidential letter that was circulated by Senator Leahy's staff to uh, uh, only to Democratic counsel, um, other uh, documents in there that are clearly uh, from cut and pasted from Democratic talking points, Democratic research, uh, and more. Even if he didn't know that at the time somehow that that was uh, stolen, um, purloined, um, what happened after that was that the Senate investigated this and found that, in fact, Manny Miranda had taken those documents and had um, been uh, using those documents. And so um, in hindsight, looking back on just the previous few months, uh, the previous year of his interchanges, uh, exchanges with Miranda, the knowledge that he'd been given, the, the information that he'd been given, um, for him to say that he had, uh, that no, he was never aware that he uh, he was he was never that he was never aware until the Senate um, until the until pardon me <clears throat> that, he, that he was never war aware that he received any shared information referenced documents he was clearly provided um, documents that were shared and reference and referenced that were from document from documents from the Democrats pardon me and in fact uh, his statement this past week uh, was astonishing that this was normal uh, these uh, these Democratic uh, staffers, my colleagues, were not sharing information with the Republican staffers, with Manny Miranda or others about these nominees, about Priscilla Owen, about Miguel Estrada. Um, it was political war. Um, they were attacking these members, the senators, as anti-Hispanic, anti-Catholic, anti-woman, anti-white Southern male. Um, their outside groups were running ads against these senators. They were trying to break the filibusters on the floor through every possible mechanism that they could. Um, and there was not this sharing. And that, I think, actually underscores how false Brett Kavanaugh's testimony has been relating to these matters. That is an utterly false depiction of the, the relationships be between the Republican staff and the Democratic staff over these nominees, that these emails, the few that we've obtained uh, from, the, uh, from this confirmation process, not the hundreds of thousands of pages that have been blocked, but from the few that have been obtained, it's clear he was being given inside information from Democratic staff at a time in which these Democratic councils were not conveying our secret strategies, research, and more to any of the Republicans. Specifically, I'm going to come back to a point, an earlier point, just because I want our viewers to really understand this, uh, because I think it's a really important to get to, the, to, get to get to the crux of this before my other final question here, which is, I mean, the, the, the question is, how do we know that he knew they were stolen? That's what I, that's what I think we have to get to. I mean, because that, if in fact it can be shown that he knew it was stolen, that they were these were stolen documents, some of the which that you even wrote some of these documents, um, th then that is a, that is a case for for perjury. Uh, and that is a case for us to kind of hold a hearing uh, in the U.S. Senate 
about the future of Kavanaugh. So, I mean, can, can you be more specific about how we should know that he knew that these were stolen? Well, there's uh, there's documents, uh, talking points that are pasted into an email, for example, um, from uh, pasted from my research uh, into an email that was given to uh, given to Kavanaugh that includes research that was never published until this past week. Some of those materials were the strategic research about the precedent for uh, memoranda from the Justice Department, some of which had been discussed on the floor, but never in that form, never in that detail. And so um, that's an example of information that he had, but there's more than that. Um, He was told that Senator Leahy's staff had circulated a confidential letter only to other Democratic counsel. Now, while Miranda claims that he didn't have that letter at the time he then goes on to describe the contents of that letter um even at the time at the time he thought that was normal which it was not once the theft was revealed he went on to tell the senate over and over that even in hindsight he didn't believe that he had ever received uh, anything that had been uh that had appeared to be drafted or prepared by the democratic staff that's simply false so taking it one step further here again you served time on the judiciary committee um in in a major position you know many of the players that are still around uh, on the Democratic side, especially. Uh, and I'm curious why you think that the other Democrats, whether it's Senator Leahy or the others on the committee, Schumer and others, are not pushing this idea and pushing this harder. What's the political dynamic here that's kind of allowing in some ways, for at least from some perspectives, for Kavanaugh's nomination to slide through without being blocked, without being stopped, without being having a major political push? What do you think is going well, I, on? I, I don't think that's a. I don't think that's an accurate uh, description of okay. what's happening. Please uh, make it know, accurate then. <laughs> I, I appreciate <laughs> that. I, you know, uh, this hearing has uh, this hearing process for Kavanaugh has been rushed uh, in an extraordinary fashion by the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, they held that uh, hearing last week, uh, the week after Labor Day. Um, some of the documents were not available to be talked about in that hearing until that hearing was underway. Um, some of the staffers only, uh, I, they, as, the, as the member said, only saw those documents the night before. Um, And so, in fact, what's happening is um, a a substantial set of materials have not been provided to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Some have provided on a committee confidential basis. Um, The senators have been reviewing those documents, comparing them with the historical record, comparing them with um, the transcript of uh, of of Mr. Of, of Mr. Pardon me, Judge Kavanaugh, and in fact, as as Senator Durbin uh, tweeted last night, uh, more and more evidence is coming forward through that review, showing that he lied directly to senators, uh, not just about this matter in terms of the of the um, the stolen files. The files were stolen from the Senate servers. Um, but also about other substantial matters of his record uh, and his and his employment on these judicial his role on these judicial nominees, and so um, I think that there's actually I, my my perception is I should say that there's actually active um, work on behalf of the senators and their staffs to examine this because it's a very serious matter um, to lie to the Senate under oath in order to obtain secure your own judgeship. Um, and I think, you know, quite frankly, really, uh, just even last week to suggest that it was normal uh, for uh, Senate Democratic staff to be providing these sorts of strategic uh, pieces of information um, to Manny Miranda uh, or to the Republicans to get to get to Kavanaugh is is um, so false. It would be laughable if it were not so serious. So uh, what does it take for an impeachable offense to actually become an impeachment hearing or inquiry at the very least? Well, I think, you know, part of the question is uh, having a full investigation and having the records uh, before the uh, before whatever body is investigating. There is an incomplete record. The records uh, provided so far show that he, uh, he his statements under oath were contradicted by the uh, records that are available. Um, but there are, you know, obviously under the Constitution, an impeachment proceeding does not begin in the Senate. It would begin in the House. It requires the House to take up such a matter to begin a, a thorough investigation of it. So, you know, that would be, you know, uh, in the future, it's not something that would happen instantly by any means. What I'm saying is, this is such a serious matter. Uh, the the type of testimony, um, uh, the type of deceptive, I think, deceitful testimony that Brett Kavanaugh has given um, throughout his uh, nomination confirmation process, um, both in 2004, 2006, and uh, this past week, uh, really requires the Senate to take the full measure of this man, to have the full record before him, and for the American people 
to have that full record before them, before this person is given a lifetime position on the court. He's 52 years old. He would be there for decades, issuing rulings for um, uh, the, in the decades ahead. Um, and, and we do not have a complete record of his activities at the Bush White House that pertain to the very questions that he was asked about repeatedly by the members of the United States Senate, the Senate Judiciary Committee. And I think the American people are entitled to that information. Lisa Gray, this has been a fascinating discussion. I really appreciate you taking the time here on the Real News Network today. Uh, I look forward to talking to you again, and we're going to be following with this and keeping this going for our viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm Mark Steiner here for the Real News Network. We'll stay on top of this for all of us. Take care.